In our last video, we saw how the NoSQL service DynamoDB could help you store and manage data in a quick and flexible, endlessly scalable manner. Now that we've seen what AWS has to offer in this space, let's have a look at what Google Cloud has available. Google Cloud offers another service called DataStore. Now DataStore is a highly scalable NoSQL database for your web and mobile applications. Very much like a DynamoDB database on AWS and blob storage for Azure. So let's have a look at Google Cloud Data Store in a bit more detail. Now it's simple and integrated. It provides a RESTful interface that which data can be easily accessed by any deployment target. You can build solutions that span across App Engine and Compute Engine. App Engine being a service for hosting web applications and Compute Engine an IaaS service for hosting infrastructure-based services. Google Cloud Data Store is fast, meaning that we can focus on building our applications with not worrying about provisioning and load anticipation. Now, another great thing about any NoSQL database is the elegant querying. Using a schemaless database allows for faster searching across multiple properties and sorting as needed. As with any NoSQL database, such as Google Cloud Data Store, it has high scalability. Scales seamlessly and automatically, allowing for high performance even when our traffic volume is growing. Let's have a listen to some of the developers at Google who built this service and what they have to say about Google Cloud Data Store. It will do everything from serving your data from a single machine, and then as you scale up, we'll go to tens of thousands of machines. We have many customers who run multi-millions of requests per second against the system without having to worry about configuring the replication system or worry about how many nodes they have to add to it. Now, to give you an idea of the scale that it operates at, early last year in 2016, we were already serving 15 trillion requests per month. So you can do some quick math and work out how many requests per second that is. Seamless and automatic scalability. It seems like magic. Well, that's because Google Cloud Data Store uses a NoSQL language, as we previously saw in the DynamoDB video. Now, when we look at a relational database, we use SQL, Structured Query Language, usually for traditional type of database offers higher consistency and reliability, which is optimal for very complex data sets. This is all mentioned in our previous videos, so this NoSQL service is very much the same. With relational databases, because of its complexity, its scalability is time demanding. It's also energy demanding because when we scale, more servers are required. And it's also very, very costly. When we scale in a relational database, we have to use vertical scalability, meaning we have to increase our servers to maintain the traffic volume. A NoSQL database or a non-relational database allows for more flexibility in the database structure. So Google Cloud Database, DynamoDB, Azure Blob Storage have limitless scalability by adding shards. This is what we call horizontal scaling on a database. You replicate the schema and divide what data is stored in each shard based on a key. It's much cheaper for scaling. Now you're probably thinking, well, we should be using this for all databases, but unfortunately with complex data sets, we still have to use relational databases. I'm going to draw a table and we're going to go through one column called concept, two, Google Cloud Data Store, and three, our SQL relational databases. The category of an object is referred to as a kind in Google Cloud Data Store and in a relational database, a table. One single object in a data store in Google Cloud is referred to as an entity. In SQL databases, it's referred to as a role. Individual data for an object is referred to as a property, whereas a relational database refers to it as a column. And then finally, our unique ID for an object is referred to as a key, and our SQL relational database refers to it as a primary key. Let's listen to some more detail from the masters at work. Um, specifically, we support a wide range of filters. Um, we just added support for OR in both Java and Python, so you can combine these filters with OR 
and and sub-expressions. Uh, it supports arbitrary sorting. And it, we also added recently projections or index-only queries where you can only um, retrieve a few uh, properties from your entities, and it's much faster and cheaper than retrieving the, old, uh, the whole entity. And we actually go beyond SQL in that we support repeated properties. So you can do set operators, like contains all or contains any. And that's incredibly useful when you're building tools like labels in Gmail or uh, tags for photos. And the best part about this is this subset is scales in the size of the result set. So you never have to worry as your database grows if your performance of your queries is actually going to degrade all over time. I, I don't know. I mean, Cloud SQL, we support all of those SQL queries uh, that you just talked about, and then some. We can do things more powerful, like aggregations. So let's say that you want to compute the average age of people living in each city. In Cloud SQL, it's as simple as this. All you have to do is select the average age and group by a city. I bet you're now feeling that you know a lot about Google Cloud Data Store. Let's talk about some more of the features. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the rich admin dashboard and what it's used for. Now the rich admin dashboard is used to view a database entity statistics and indexes where we can query your database, also back up and restore your data. There's also diverse data types. Now we can store anything from integers, floating point numbers, strings, dates, binary data, so much more. I could go on forever. So we know everything about a NoSQL database using data store, but how do we access the data? Well, we have multiple access methods. First of all, we have a JSON API, we have open source clients, and we also have community maintained ORMs such as Objectify and NDB. Acid transactions, another topic of discussion. We have multiple data store operations in a single transaction with acid characteristics. All the group operations succeed or fail. Our database entities are fully managed, automatically handle sharding and replication, meaning our database is highly available and kept highly consistent. We don't need to worry too much about customizing these features because the beauty of Data Store is it maintains all the sharding, availability, and consistency itself. So it's a highly available database. And why is that? Well, we have high availability of reads and writes because Data Store runs in Google Data Centers, which use redundancy to minimize impact from points of failure. We currently give you two flavors of replication you can choose depending on the location that you select. Regional locations operate a multi-zone replicated system, whereas our multi-region locations are not just multi-zone, but also multi-region, where we replicate across distinct geo-regions. Now, I wanted to give you a quick visual example. Uh, this is fairly simplified of what our replication topology looks like uh, in one of our multi-region locations. So this is US Central, where we run two full replicas in Oklahoma, two full replicas in Iowa, and we also have what we call a witness to act as a tiebreaker in South Carolina. Now, to connect all these together, we run three independent fiber optic networks so that we can have a network down for maintenance. We can have another one unexpectedly out, like someone goes through it with a backhoe. Unfortunately, that does sometimes happen. And still continue to serve full production load without you noticing anything. We know that Google Cloud Data Store provides higher consistency. And that's because of the balance of strong and eventual consistency from strong consistent data for entity lookups by key and ancestor queries brings eventual consistency for all other queries. Depending on how you work with your data, uh, we support both eventual consistency and strong consistency within the system. Now, the easy way to think about this is if you're using us like a key value store, so if you're just doing gets, lookups, and writes, we're strongly consistent because we will synchronously replicate that data across our network. You get eventual consistency when you're using our indexes because the indexes themselves are eventually consistent. And that's how we sustain throughput regardless of how many indexes you write. There is one caveat to that, and that's if you're doing a thing that we call an ancestor query, that is also strongly consistent. 
and ancestor queries are when you're querying within one of those single hierarchies, those single entity groups. So if you co-locate your data, we can guarantee a strongly consistent query in that particular case. Let's jump to a new topic about server-side encryption. Data is encrypted before it is written to disk at no additional charge. We have multiple options for encryption here. Google manages encryption keys as a default option. We also have customer supplied encryption keys where a user can create and manage their own encryption keys for server side. And finally, we have customer managed encryption keys where users can generate and manage their encryption keys with cloud key management service. Is the encryption possible before sending the data to cloud data store? Yes, and we do this through client side encryption meaning the data is already encrypted from the client side by a cloud data store server side. That seems great. So should I use cloud data store for all my data management? Well, that depends. You should use cloud data store if your data is unstructured. Also, if your data is non-relational. So examples could include things like videos, images, movies. Cloud Data Store is just one of the database offerings we have within our managed database and storage portfolio. Uh, it's really as our managed NoSQL database for user-facing data sits in that no relational space, sorry, non-relational space. Uh, the other option there is Cloud Bigtable. Uh, if you have relational workloads, we have the option of Cloud SQL or Cloud Spanner. We also have everything from object storage, persistent disk, Google Cloud Storage for those blob uh, is the object storage I mentioned. And then if you're using App Engine, you do have that hosted memcache solution. Thanks for watching, guys. If you would like to subscribe, comment, please feel free to leave anything below this video and listen out for more tutorials to come.